Marco thinks he's got a better beard than me? Than this? Marco? Marco, I'm going to come to Bosnia and hurts gra 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 Bosnia and shave off your beard and I will shave that smile off of your A Tribe Called Quest Yes, I'm doing this, I'm doing a worst to best video, my first ever one uh, I see a lot of people in the YouTube music community doing these videos I've always thought I wouldn't bother because I've seen so many countless different videos and interpretations of you know the best albums ranked lists and I thought what can I offer to this conversation what can I do uh, to these lists that everyone else hasn't already done and you know I thought fuck it look fuck it I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do artists that maybe not everyone has done perhaps different ones that maybe no one else will do and perhaps add something new to the uh, to the conversation, to the series of worst to best. I'm hoping to carry on this series. Um, do comment ideas on artists I should do. I may even do them. Perhaps I could do some kind of like viewer involved type thing where I sort of get people to pick or whatever. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. But yeah, try Call Quest, worst to best. At this point, there are legendary critically acclaimed hip-hop group that I still get talked about to this day for very good reasons and I will explain as to why they get talked about so much and yeah I may as well go into the list um yeah don't stress that cause it's not in your bloodstream your whole being comes from greatness you remember Chase Long got you caught in the storms of December and brothers on the block back in nines like starting at number six Beats, Rhymes and Life from 1996, their fourth studio album, in my opinion, is A Tribe Called Quest's least essential album. I say least essential because I'm not going to lie, I think all six of their albums are at least good and at least worthy of your time if you're a hip-hop head and you haven't tried them all, but least essential in the sense that this album is pretty uneventful to be honest. Not really much happens. I can't really say there are many standout songs. There are a few moments that feel like they're throwing it back to their heyday, you know, their most critically acclaimed work in like the early 90s. There's even one song where they do the whole are you on point tip all the time, Fife? Are you on point tip all the time? But they just change the words. It's just kind of like they're just living their glory days and it didn't really feel to me as the sort of in the moment legendary verses that we get from Q-Tip on previous efforts. Not to say that they completely fizzled out in 1996, it just feels as though this album didn't really stand out to me as much as many other albums that they have in their discography and other albums that came out around this time too in the hip hop world. I just think Tribe were doing what Tribe do on this album and it just didn't feel as much as the sort of amazing sparks and energy that we always get from the group but it's still a pretty solid release so do check it out if you never have speaking of which got a leash and a wish just to rock you miss make a militant move beat my strategy end of the day you're not mad number five we have the love movement from 1998 their fifth studio album and actually their last album until they returned 18 years later um, in 2016, which I will get to that album later. The Love Movement to me is better than Beats, Rhymes and Life uh, because it had more of a focus. There was a bit more of like a destined sort of uh, end goal, if you like. The Love Movement is incredibly positive, incredibly happy and just shiny and, you know, Q-Tip and Five Dog just spread the love on this album. It is the love movement. This is what this album is. They're just being genuine and from the heart with every track. It might sound hippie-ish, but that's not really what this album is. This album is more about just, you know, showing a different side to the genre of hip-hop and showing how, you know, you can love the people around you. You can love your loved ones and all that kind of stuff. 
It is quite a rare thing in the hip hop genre for an entire album to have its focus in this area. I mean, it's not technically rare for a tribe called Questo, who are a group that have always gone against the grain, gone against the narrative of the hip hop and how it's perceived, you know, it's perceived as like this gang driven violent genre, whereas A Tribe Called Quest have always gone against that. And so this album actually makes total sense in the discography of A Tribe Called Quest if any other band were to ever do it in the hip hop genre. And it's just one thing I really enjoy about this album. It's not something I consider great, but the positivity oozing throughout is something that you always just smile at and I, I appreciate it for what it is, even if it isn't the most adventurous uh, production wise or isn't the most adventurous in the sense that they have done music that sounds more forward thinking than this. It's an album I can really appreciate and it's an album that I just think was necessary for this genre of music and A Tribe Called Quest are a group that I just absolutely adore for going against the grain and doing stuff like this more so than any other, other uh, hip hop artist ever. People's instinctive travels and the paths of rhythm. At number four, this is where I'd say A Tribe Called Quest are perhaps known for what they are known for because this is their debut album and it has some of their most influential songs ever. It's never been considered their best album but it's considered an influential album as it's their debut and they came through with some iconic songs on here, some of the most well-known hip-hop hip -hop songs of all time. Benita Apple Bomb being one of them, being sampled in so many songs over the years and it's a freaking great song as it is anyway. And the legendary Can I Kick It, which is used in so many hip hop songs, like it is referenced all the time, it is the question that so many rappers have asked in their music over the years, and it's because of A Tribe Called Quest. Even, 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 right? Robbie Williams referenced it in his song Rock DJ. Robbie Williams referenced this song. Are you kidding me? I don't wanna rock, rock DJ. The UK people will know this song, I know it, I know it. I guess this album mostly suffers from the fact that it's a hip-hop album from the 90s and as many may, may already know at this point that hip-hop in the 90s is as legendary as it is but so many albums suffered from ridiculous length um, times like this is well over an hour long and it, it probably doesn't need to be to be honest. A few tracks running over six minutes, that kind of stuff, you know. It's something that you don't see as much these days in the more critically acclaimed hip hop albums, but the reason why so many artists push for longer albums is streaming, but this wasn't the case back then. It's always kind of baffled me as to why so many rap albums from the 90s were like 70 minutes long and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily make them bad, but I can guarantee if you shaved a few tracks off some of the iconic albums that are so long, they probably would be better today. But man, you cannot deny ham and eggs. If you are a vegan, this is your jam. Ham and eggs, I swear, this is a fact, started veganism. It, this is what created veganism. Veganism started in 1990 from a tribe called Quest, and this is a fact that you cannot deny. You can look it up. I'm telling you the truth. Um, yeah. No, but in all seriousness, this is actually a really good album and um, definitely influential for hip hop in the 90s on the whole with the more jazzy type production. I think it definitely set the tone for what was to come but it's not their best album, and I'm gonna go through the top three now. Midnight Marauders at number three. Yeah, this one came just after Low End Theory. Um, the space between them is just a year, and that's pretty impressive, to be honest. The quality of music from the guys in Tribe Called Quest didn't really dip all that much, even though I do think it's worse than the Low End Theory, but this album has some of the best songs of all time, easily. Award Tour is just a friggin' great track, you know, sort of in the vein of De La Soul. Those two artists were very similar at the time, and Award Tour is a very similar hook 
to what you would hear on a De La Soul song. It's such a great track. Interesting thing about this album too is that it um, didn't really land much of an impression on me at first, but uh, as time's gone on, as I've listened to it more, I've certainly appreciated way more songs than I realised, especially tracks like Oh My God and Sucker. Q-Tip was on the ball with some of these hooks, man, like seriously. Um, they're catchy as hell, and I think that's what carries the album for the most part. Even though lyrically, Five Dog is pretty solid throughout, and of course Q-Tip being Q-Tip as always. Like, I just think it's the hooks that grabs me with this album the most. Pretty overlooked, I think, in um, terms of hip-hop from the 90s. I know it's critically acclaimed and everyone knows Tripod Quest at this point, but yeah, I think this one has kind of fallen behind. Um, along with other albums that have rose to the top. Perhaps there's a reason for that. I know they have quite a uh, lo-fi-ish sound and perhaps some of their albums haven't aged too well, but there's something about them that certainly have the charm and the charisma that holds up today. But now, now we're at number two and what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Because if I say what number two is, you know what number one is. Well, which one's it gonna be? Which one? <laughs> Yes, the low end theory is at my number two. Um, the low end theory, the legendary hip hop album, only at number two. Why? Why? This album is like a, a flawless rap album from the 90s. It absolutely deserves all the acclaim that it's got over the years. The one thing I will say is perhaps it's aged slightly off. I think some of the tracks sound a bit muddy in their quality. But you know what? That adds to the um, to the charm for me. It absolutely does. Everything about this album I freaking love. Like the sound of the sort of drums and stuff are just quite out of touch with sort of the way modern music sounds now. But man, it it, it really works in its favour. It's very rare that dated albums um, still sound good even though they're dated but this is one of those occurrences that it just works and you cannot deny the legendary status of so many of the songs on here check the rhyme the the, the way Fife and Q-Tip go off of each other and play off and it's just so playful and fun like Jesus Christ it, it's such a friggin great song and the beat on that one is fantastic too on the song Jazz we've got where Fife is, you know, telling you how you can start a band and how you can do what they do. It's really quite um, inspiring the way he just kind of goes off. And again, this track is just fantastic with the production. Perhaps it's not quite as jazzy as some of their stuff that they have done, but the jazz influence is on this album for sure. I've always found the jazz rap label for this album a bit odd. Yes, yeah, sure, there's jazz influence here, but man, the production is so much more than just jazzy beats, you know? Ali Shaheed Muhammad has so much more in him than just jazz rap. Like, it, it, it's such a redundant term for me, I don't know, it's always irked me. Even with it being slightly dated, it still has some of the best production in hip-hop of all time, and easily of the 90s too. I mean, Jesus Christ, scenario with Busta Rhymes, that friggin' hard-hitting beat. <sighs> Man, it knocks me every time. It, it's it's fucking great. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what? So what? So what's the scenario? Bugging out has fantastic production vibes and stuff as well. There's so much to this album that I friggin' love, and I'm not even mentioning the track of What, which might be one of the best rap songs ever, to be honest. That friggin' verse from Q-Tip where he asks all those questions. Like, the way he just goes off and off and off and off and asks so many questions and so many of them have really funny connotations to them, so many of them are quite profound. Man, I just freaking love that track. And it's so short too, yeah, he packs in so much in the shortest amount of time, it's unbelievable. And the minute this album starts off, I just know I'm in for the best ride ever because of Q-Tip's opening lines. Oh, I freaking love that, man. It just gets me going every time. Back in the days when I was a teenager, before I had a job, before I had a pager. It's just so good. It's like, tell me, Q-Tip, tell me your story. But yeah, as hyped as I am for this album, it's not my favourite by uh, a tribe, cry, a tribe called Quest. It is not. No. No. Number one. We got it from here. Thank you for your service.
since 2016, this album has risen and risen and risen and risen higher and higher for me in terms of my favourites of 2016, to the point where now it could easily be a top 5 contender. Even back when I did my 2016 list on this channel, it was somewhere like 10 or 11 or 9 or something like that, but now I think it could even be higher than that. And the thing is, is that it's not because it's the most recent one that I think so highly of it either. I just think there's so much depth to this album. Jesus Christ, um, We The People, you know, has such a hard-hitting beat. Um, Q-Tip is just rhyming his arse off on this track. And yeah, it's completely overtly liberal, that song. I don't think it goes against it, though, because I know sometimes when politics come into music it can get a little annoying and a little in your face, but I don't think this song does that at all. And Fife Dog does make a posthumous uh, appearance on this album, and unfortunately we don't get much Fife Dog on this album at, because of his passing. And Fife Dog has always been such an essential member of a tribe called Quest. But Jesus Christ, you uh, you do not get less talent on this album because of one member not being there. Jesus Christ, the absolute incredible production comes through again. Their best production I think they've ever done. It's not sounding aged at all and I don't think it will. Some incredible lyrics like on Lost Somebody where of course they are talking about Five Dog but the chorus gets me every time man. It, oh, it sends chills in me, honestly. It's just so heartbreaking to listen to. The space program, which is funny, but like it kind of isn't because it's talking about how like, you know, poor people will just get sent to the moon and no one really cares about them. <laughs> it's really bad, but it's kind of really tongue in cheek as well. But it's just really clever writing from Q-Tip here. And we get those rhymes throughout the whole thing because we have features from Anderson Pack. We got, um, uh, Andre 3000 on this song, uh, on this album as well. We got Kendrick Lamar. And I really love the way they just send off everything on this album and pass the torch over to the new generation. As they mentioned on one of the tracks, how like, you know, Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole will be the kings. So we'll just pass the torch onto them and they will carry hip hop forward. It's sort of like they had to come back for this one album just to cement their place in hip hop and leave their mark for one more time and then just leave it for the rest of the hip hop generation to carry things on. And the entire album is essentially built upon that sentiment with the features they use and the references they make. And I don't know, that entire thing to me just carries this album forward. How they bring back Buster Rhymes for that one last time and he still kills it again, even though a lot of people might underrate that track, Mobius, but I still think it's great. And how it's all an ode to Fife Dog himself as well, you know, the last track being the Donalds, you know, um, yeah, there are just so many things about this album I friggin' love, but I think it's just the production and the sound and the choruses on these tracks that really bring it forward. Tracks like This Generation has such a unique sound to hip hop in 2016 and even now. And it's like, how are they bringing out songs that have unique production and sound so many years into their career? They're pretty much past their peak, but they're still doing it better than most today, to be honest. So yeah, I could easily see the argument that the low end theory is their best. And you might think I'm wrong for putting this one at number one instead of the low end theory. But you know, this is just one of those albums that I have more of a personal attachment to. And as years go on, I think it's gonna get, keep getting better and better and better, to be honest. They left their mark in hip hop in the 90s and they came back 20 years later to leave that mark once again. And it's incredibly admirable that they kept the quality up, you know, it's it's insane. And I freaking love this album. And the reason why I think I did A Tribe Called Quest first was because I have a number one that people might disagree with. So it feels like I'm adding to the conversation a little bit more with this list. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. This is, this is it, worst to best, Tribe Called Quest. Please share this video if you're a big fan of Tribe Called Quest and you want to, you know, share my opinions or whatever and subscribe to the channel for more reviews if you like this and more videos like this in the future. Tell me what I should do next in this series and if you like the series and whatever, you know, listen to any of these albums if you never have. Have a good day and yeah, Tribe Called Quest. Friggin' great hip hop group. Yeah, yeah, yeah.